Welcome to this, the fifth Final Cut screencast. In this screencast, we're going to be going over uh, fading in and out and also adding transitions. Now, one option that you should almost always have checked uh, when working in the timeline is the toggle clip overlays, which is in the lower left here. And what that does is clicking it will add these lines to your audio layers and to your video layers. For the video layer, this line is representative of the opacity of your video clip. And for the audio layer, it is representative of your audio levels, your volume. And with the selection tool, I can go and uh, manipulate the opacity of this entire clip at once, or the uh, volume of the, this entire clip at once. Or I can use the pen tool with a hotkey P and set points on these lines to then drag things down or up and the same with the audio I can uh, lower the volume or raise the volume. Now with the audio I think it uh, makes sense no matter what background you're coming from lowering this line will lower the volume and raising this line will raise the volume. For the video um, you are manipulating the opacity and what that means is um, at 100%, which is what it is at the top right here, you see uh, the video clip in its original form, um, but the more you lower the opacity, the more transparent it becomes up until zero, in which case uh, you can no longer see the video and you only see what is behind it, in which case um, right now there's a black background behind it, there's nothing behind it. So that is opacity. And this is useful for fading in at the beginning of a project. You know, you set two points and you drag the left point down to zero. So you're starting at black and you're coming up to 100%. Or it's also useful to fade out at the end. And the length of your fade is determined by how steep your slope is, the slope of this line. So a very long line with a gradual slope would be a long fade out. And a very steep slope with a very short line would be a very quick fade out. Now I know it is possible to fade out simply using a cross dissolve like so. Um, but I prefer to use the pen tool because you have a more control over the duration of your fade out. Uh, with the cross dissolve you would have to put the dissolve in and then right click on the dissolve and then go to set duration and then put the new duration. It's just uh, you know a few more steps that you are saving by using the pen tool. Now as you just saw I added a transition at the end of my clip right here and you do that by uh, going in between clips and right clicking and simply adding transition, in this case cross dissolve. Honestly cross dissolve is probably the only kind of transition you're going to have other than a straight cut. Uh, you don't want to get too carried away adding, I don't know, wipes and swirls and all these other things because it just gets it just gets to be too much and you want to keep it simple and and have the focus on your content and not uh, some fancy special effect that you think you're adding. Now one problem with uh, with subclips that you'll find is, uh, well I'll show you on this example here. You will try and add a transition and you'll get uh, insufficient media for the requested transition at one or more edit points. And that is because when you create a subclip and then lay it down, you've laid down this clip in its entirety. There is nothing, the clip ends here and in the case of this clip, the clip starts here. Uh, but what a cross dissolve wants to do is it wants to pull a little of this clip here and it wants to pull a little of this clip here to kind of dissolve them together and combine them in this uh, transition area. And that can't be done because there is actually no content past this point and there's no content before this point. So if you're using subclips, and this is why when we make subclips we, we get a little extra in the front and we get a little extra in the back. Uh, what you want to do is you want to use the blade tool with B and cut a little on the end of this one, and cut a little 
on the front of this one. Delete those away. And then uh, drag this back. You can also drag back by right clicking and doing close gap. And now we should be able to add this transition, like so. If when making your subclip you do grab a little more on the front and a little more on the end, uh, when bringing it into the timeline, what you want to do is double click it to bring it up in the viewer and then set your in and out points using the I and O button uh, for the actual clip that you want and you know not include the extra content on the front or the back. Uh, drag that into your timeline and then when you dissolve, when you want to add a transition like a cross dissolve, you don't have to do any cutting. The extra content is already there you know, on the end and you can add your dissolve without any problems. Now you may be wondering, uh, what if I want to add a cross dissolve but not a cross fade, or add a cross fade but not a cross dissolve? And um, typically when you bring your video clips in, they will come paired with audio. So right now the video and the audio are paired together. When I click one, the other one's highlighted. What you have to do is uh, select your clip, go up to modify, and then unlink them. So now, if I click the video, only the video is selected. And if I click the audio, only the audio is selected. So if I were to uh, add the transition now, only the video gets the cross dissolve. Or only the audio, pardon me, only the audio gets the cross dissolve. So remember to unlink your clips if you want to have um, only a video transition or only an audio transition. I think that's it for this time. Um, the next screencast should cover adding basic text elements to your projects.